Welcome everybody to the South East London Meccano Club's annual exhibition here in Eltham. Wonderful models, large and small for everyone to see. You've had a very good turnout this year. Next year, come along and you'll, you'll see all the wonderful models that the club can produce. We've got models of trains, we've got models of bridges, we've got models of vehicles, we've got models of boats. Everything under the sun can be made with Meccano. So come to our exhibition next year and join in the fun. Thanks very much. Uh, this is a, a, ma a MW manual uh, model, a recent one, of a, uh, an electrically uh, driven uh, with batteries on the back of the unit, uh, light milk floats. Uh, they were fairly successful but um, only lasted in British Railway service for probably two or three years uh, as they weren't sufficiently powerful to move the loads that they were required. This mechanism dismounts the trailer, unhooks the brakes, uh, and the trailer can be lifted away. And it locks the wheels down, and the brakes stay on, on the trailer. Quite a nice model to build, but one or two minor problems, which uh, I still haven't sorted out yet. Uh, but uh, it makes a, a nice display model as a static item. This model is a motor chassis um, dating from about 1928, the original design, with a three-speed forward and reverse gearbox, working differential, a working clutch and Ackerman steering. A classic design. The model is uh, of the owl that Pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea green boat. Uh, some people have said that green is too dark, and I said, well, they're dark green peas on my boat. Um, it's based on a model shown in Constructor Quarterly some time ago. Uh, it took about three or four weeks to put together, uh, and there's been uh, quite a few shows over the last two years and it's still working very successfully and uh, I'm grateful to whoever designed the original model.
these two cranes were built in Calais in France to promote the smaller model of crane here that you see to the left of me. They were found in a skip after a toy um, manufacturer's display, we think. They were built in Calais and they're, we think, about 10 years old. The one on the left over there has recently been refurbished and is in prime condition. The one on the right here needs some work done on it, which we hope to do over the next six months or so and get the two of them in fully working order. They were made um, originally to promote this smaller crane, which is still a popular toy that's bought today by many Meccano modellers and works well. This model is a uh, fairly good sized model of a schools class locomotive in just post war red and green Meccano. And if I press the button, you'll see the motion working and the wheels go. And as you see, it's complete with its tender, and you would need a number 10 set to build this model. Just in front of it, are two other items produced by Meccano, Dizzy Builder, which is for younger children, not strictly speaking Meccano, but uh, made by the same firm, and a totally unused number 4A set, still strung in its original box. It looks very attractive, but being totally unused, just a little bit sad, but people like to see it on display. They were around in the 1930s, 40s in London, and the uh, HR, because that stands for Hilly Roots, each truck, they call them trucks, the bogies on a tram is called a truck, each truck has got, in the original, two motors, um, whereas most trams had maximum traction, bogies, trucks, with a single motor in each, in each truck. But for the Meccano model, I've actually only got a single motor in each in each bogey. So the tram, the model itself, has got two motors. I did try it with four motors, but it kept on tripping out the transformer. And two motors runs quite well, so on, on level surface. Uh, so there we are. The trucks themselves actually started building back in 1994. And we're now 2009, and I've only really just finished. But it, it's been substantially finished for several years. Uh, the last thing I did was put some lighting in, which a little LEDs at the top deck, which are barely visible to this. I'm sure we've gone through a brighter light, but there they are, under the battery. Um, so I've tried got two motors, they're both power drive motors, they just about fit in between the bogey frames. So the first thing I did was build the bogies, and then I worked my way up, building the deck. <coughs> Most of the tram, there are no real mechanics in the tram. The motor just runs straight, just through a single spur uh, uh, gears, straight onto the axle. 
uh, there's a little bit of suspension, so the tram will rock the brakes slightly, there's a little bit of movement there. Um, and most of all, so the tram is just sort of the uh, coach work and plates and so on. Uh, the seats, all the seats, as in a real tram of an age, flip, so the seat and flip from one side to the other. I don't believe in my position. But they will all tip in the direction of travel. Uh, the step for the passengers um, can retract when the most is driving to this end. The step will be flipped up and the level will reveal the light guards and they will light guards around the whole front end underneath the platform to stop stray dogs, children or people who don't accidentally might fall in front of the tram uh, that will keep them out. And in the real thing, I think the this lower section of uh, life guard can actually be dropped down onto the road. There's a lever by the motorman's um, position, and he could pull a lever, and that would drop this thing down, and that would actually pick someone up rather than go underneath the wheels. Um, the current collection on this tram is by the uh, conduit system, uh, which in the real thing is a slot in the middle of the road and the plough, which is really the uh, current collector on the tram, would run in that slot. For the model, it is just a surface contact um, thing with um, two pulleys on a little sort of a T-shaped arm, an upside down T running on the top of this, and then it's picked up by down here two um, channel segments, that, sections that run across and the, the top of the plow sits in that. The current is picked up through the conductor rail, up through the plow, and a wiper arm on the back of each, on the inside of each of the trucks, that bears on the on these two channels and that completes the circuit and the power is returned through the main running rails. So this, this third rail in the middle is supported on insulated fish plates and uh, strips and so on. Here we have a model of a traction engine built in 1920s dark red and green Meccano. The original design for this came out about the same time and it shows the motion of the, uh, of the crank and the eccentric and is typical of the traction engines that were produced in the, from the middle of the 19th century right up into the early 30s. And just behind them are a couple of vintage sets, uh, this one dating from 1919. You'll notice it's all nickel plated, there's no colours to them. And this other set here, which was one of the first sets to be produced in colours, dating from 1927.
Now this is uh, Meccano manual model number eight set uh, from the uh, mid sixties. Uh, it's a Foden four wheel steer at the front. It's not powered, but as I built it mainly for my grandson to use uh, to load all his animals on. But it's a nice model to build and uh, took about a week to put together. Meccano taxi built with the Meccano number 7 set of 1956. Typical type of taxi you saw in London in the 50s. Anna and Chris were asked to design a, a bridge to span the ship canal between the Larry and the Imperial Institute North. They were particularly asked to go produce an interesting bridge. They decided to produce this folding design, which I think most people agree is an interesting uh, uh, solution to the problem. Uh, the idea was not entirely original. There are two similar, uh, there were a couple of similar bridges um, across uh, uh, in use in the Chicago elevated railway system. They were not entirely successful and I don't think they're there any longer. Uh, they did clank and groan a lot. And there is also another, even more complicated, one in three sections in Kiel. Uh, unfortunately, uh, not, uh, that is a bit too complicated to make a kind of model of it. Um, I decided to make this model um, because I was particularly interested in their design. And it was originally uh, built uh, with just the standard Meccano uh, auto reversing mechanism, which he still has, uh, which can be used when uh, the computer isn't available. Now uh, it, is, it has been converted to use, uh, to be operated by a computer. Originally, I think it used a BBC computer. Uh, using a program which uh, originally developed to use with the old jackknife bridge in the early manuals, uh, which then was adapted to do this one. And as you can see, uh, the computer controls both the lifting of the bridge, uh, the gates, and also it works the traffic lights as well. The original uh, uh, version used the BBC computer with a, an interface using the parallel port and later on it uh, was changed to uh, using a, a PC uh, again with, a, with, a, with another inter interface using the parallel port this time using BBC Basic 86 since then um, the, the computers have, uh, have died and the model hasn't and it is now using uh, BBC for basic for Windows using a, a fairly recent uh, laptop, laptop using Windows Vista. The interface has been changed to uh, a Velban uh, P8053 
and there are two relay boards uh, to control the motor. That's the motors. There are eight relays in use, um, two each for each of the three motors and two for the traffic lights. And there are five inputs, uh, two of which pick up the uh, when the gates are open or closed. Uh, another one detects whether the bridge is open or closed. And, a, and a, another one uh, counts the number of revolutions of the, of the, uh, of the motor control lifting and lowering the bridge. And this one, uh, these contacts are arranged so that they can display on the computer screen the behaviour of the bridge. And so you can watch the bridge go up and down both in real life and on the computer screen. It has worked satisfactorily all afternoon after a few adjustments. It's had a rather, rather rough journey from Manchester and it has done uh, 112 operations uh, during the afternoon. Here is a toy shop display model of a big wheel with illuminated base and uh, coloured lights and it dates from the 1940s, 1950s in red and green Makana. based on a model I saw at Henley a couple of years ago, um, designed by Nick Rogers. Um, unfortunately I only managed to get photographs of the framework and the actual marionette, but not the mechanism. It's just taken me a little while to sort out, but it now works very successfully. The lid hinges so you can see the works inside. And, um, it's powered by one of Dave Taylor's um, can motors running at a very slow speed and uh, as you can see yeah, it's mainly cans, chain and string which one or two of my friends know my aversion to string in the car models um, took about a week to sort out the movements to avoid both legs and arms going up at the same time but uh, once it's organised it runs very well and quietly and, uh, be left alone all day. Now this is, you could say, the pride of my collection, uh, a factory made toy shop display model of the Tower Bridge, made in uh, about 1970 yellow and silver coloured Meccano, made in the factory and probably did service in the toy shop window for many years before I discovered it, refurbished it and brought it out on display. It works with uh, flashing, well with coloured lights and raising bascules and over the years this has helped me raise about £5,000 for charity at various displays. Everybody loves it.